Now, carriage of timber cargo on ships uh, will be covered in a few videos because it's a vast topic and I can't cover it in one video itself. So previously I have made a video on timber cargo and I'll give you the link to that video of course and uh, you should be watching it with all the other videos related to the carriage of timber cargo. In today's video I'll be talking about the timber code specifically and then in my subsequent videos I'll also talk about uh, the stability criteria and the lashing requirements and the precautions to be taken uh, but because it's a, a lot of uh, topic to cover I am going to make it in separate videos. I hope you will watch all of those videos and enhance your knowledge about this topic. All right. So the timber code is a non-mandatory code and applies to all ships of 24 meters or more in length carrying timber deck cargo. The aim of the code is to ensure that storage and cargo securing arrangements for timber deck cargoes enable a safe and yet a rational securing of the cargo so that it is satisfactorily prevented from shifting. The code also includes alternative design principles taking into account the acceleration forces cargo may be subjected to throughout the voyage. Uh, more specifically, the code provides guidances on uh, practices for safe transportation, methodologies for safe storage and securing, design principles for securing systems, guidance for developing procedures to be included in ships cargo securing manuals and sample checklists for safe storage and securing. The code is designed to assist ship owners, charters, operating companies, seafarers, port industries, shippers, pre-packaging organizations which are involved in preparation, loading and stowing of timber deck cargoes, administrations, manufacturers, designers of ships and equipment associated with the carriage of timber deck cargoes and those developing cargo securing manuals for the carriage of the timber deck cargoes. The layout of the code is in six chapters and three appendices. So chapter one is general, chapter two is stability, Chapter 3 talks about storage, Chapter 4 talks about securing of the cargo, Chapter 5 talks about personal protection and safety devices, and whereas Chapter 6 talks about action to be taken during voyage. Uh, finally, we have Appendix A, B and C uh, of the code, uh, where Appendix A provides advice on storage practice, Appendix B provides general guidance for under deck storage of logs, and Appendix C uh, provides the intact stability criteria for passengers and cargo ships of uh, uh, less than 100 meters with respect to deck cargo. Well, I'll be talking about all of these, but in separate videos because otherwise it becomes too much of content for you to also follow and for me to also include in one video. You get bored and go off to sleep. So timber will include sawn wood, lumber, cans, logs, poles, pulp wood, and all other types of limber in loose or packaged forms, but not include wood pulp or similar cargoes. Uh, some of the hazards of timber cargoes include uh, when it is loaded on deck, the cargo becomes exposed to elements of sea, weather, etc. And during this, uh, it may also absorb rain, water and shipping seas. Now what happens with that is the cargo becomes much heavier and there might be a shift in the center of the gravity. Also, it puts some more strain on the lashings and the securings uh, that are used to secure the cargo. The wind surface area also increases, increases as there is more area now available on the ship's step for the wind to act upon and that can affect the ship handling characteristics. Also develop more chances of the ship healing if strong winds are coming in from the beam especially. If ice secretion occurs, that is deposition of or deposit of ice on deck occurs, then uh, certain nooks and corners may become inaccessible to the crew, especially for tightening the lashings and securings as well. Uh, lashing of the cargo has to be done and tightening of lashings during voyage is quite a hazardous operation, especially in rough weather. And it's, it's a quite a risky business, uh, especially if the uh, lashings are have to be tightened and it's rough weather and the lashings may already be loose. If the timber cargo comes loose, then people may get trapped in the timber cargo. Some of the hazards, other hazards include if lashings part, hazard to personal increases like I, I told you before and accessibility is restricted to working areas including cranes, decks, topside, tank walls, etc. Under decks, if the stow is not compact, the cargo may shift as well. And uh, if cargo is loaded inside the hold, it may result in the oxygen depletion as well because it kind of absorbs the oxygen in the cargo hold. 
there is also a danger to stevedores while the cargo is being stored in holds and make sure that uh, proper signalman is required at the hatch comings to give the signals because timber cargo can sometimes be so heavy that it can cause a serious damage to the ship if not stored slowly under the hold especially all right where it is you have to adjust the cargo